and welcome to Pepper Club. I am Perpetua Pasamukita. Thank you for joining us today on Pepper Club. If this is your very first time, thank you. And please subscribe to my channel right here. Thank you. Well, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for all of returning to my channel. I do appreciate you. Thank you. For this particular episode, I'm interested in the people who are already into business, but they want to scale up. So what options are available for them? Okay, you, sometimes scaling up is industry specific. There's a lot of industry help available to people who want to scale up. And then of course, there's a lot of gender help for women as well. You would find out that when the government has packages, special loans, single digits for women-owned businesses. You would also find out that the government has special loans that you can use to scale up for uh, entrepreneurs that are younger, CEOs that are younger than 35. I don't know why they did that because those of us that are over 35, we still have businesses to scale. But we thank God, they are still giving women loans, so we will go under that heading. And then there are others for people who are, as in there are millions for people who do agriculture. Because we found out that we started depending on oil and we need to go back to agriculture. There's so much support for agriculture in Nigeria right now. That's why I'm saying that scaling might be industry specific. And a sound warning I have to give is you don't use commercial loans from, or rather you don't use loans from commercial banks to scale because your payment terms don't make sense in terms of your profit margin. When you're doing very well, you're probably going to be making a 30 to 33% return on your investment. The bank is going to ask you, the commercial bank is going to ask you for interest within the range of 26 to 28, 30%, which means that you're going to be doing all the work and then be paying the bank all your interest. But you see, the bank loan, you would have used it to scale. If you don't mind, you would have used it to scale, but it just means that all the money you make for the first two, three years is going to the bank and not to you. And so it will probably still be lean until you finish repaying that loan. We all need to be very careful and look for specialized loans for scaling businesses. Now, these loans are not available for startups because you need to show a track record. You need to show what you have been able to do before you can access this loan. You need to be able to show your financial records that you've been keeping records. You need to be able to show that you have been doing business and you have managed to stay profitable. So you have a bit of experience and you know exactly what you're doing. The laws that make sense, let me just repeat myself. The laws that make sense are the laws in the single digit range so that you will not be working and feel like, hey, hey, monkey, they walk, baboon, they jump. You understand? So that between you and the repayment of the loan, there's still a bit of room. You can have a sinking fund. You can even use your profits to grow your business more because you're not paying it all over to the person that loaned you money. All right, thank you so much. I remember earlier you talked about angel investors. Uh, would you advise, or are there certain things I need to consider before agreeing to an angel investor? Oh yes, definitely. Um, I'm a lawyer and so I would always tell you that it makes a lot of sense to have a lawyer relative or a lawyer friend if you don't want to pay for legal services. At least have somebody in your corner that you can pay with maybe soup that will help you look over the kind of commitments you are getting into. But uh, don't worry, you will still pay money. It might not be as much as if the person is a total stranger. But please get a lawyer in your corner to review the kind of agreements you are getting into. Sometimes angel investors ask you for your head and your neck. The same way I say that the commercial banks might end up taking so much interest that you don't have anything left from the scaling. That's the same way you need to scrutinize the terms you are being offered by your angel investor. When your angel investor gives you funds, is it going to give you time to actually run the business for a while before you have to repay? The truth is that the minute you borrow, your time to repay starts to count. And we, we all know that there's still a process for using the money that you have borrowed. 
they are still going to buy, they are still going to maybe employ some more people, maybe explore more marketing channels. All these things are going to take time. So the angel investor, is it going to give you a moratorium or some period where you are not going to be repaying anything, but you'll be building the business to the size you want? That's something you need to consider. Another thing you need to consider is how much is this person asking for? If I have said that double digit interest rates kill a business because they do not give the entrepreneur something to look forward to at the end of the day because everything he makes goes to the bank, then definitely double digit interest to angel investors will do exactly the same thing. Now, when they are not even asking for repayment with interest, when what the angel investor wants is equity, then you will need to find out what percentage equity are they asking for. Of course, you know that in a private company, when somebody who is not you, the owner of the idea, takes 51% of your equity, that means the person has a larger share than you do. And so that's the major owner of the business. And then if you need to make a decision concerning the business, and the person's decision carries more weight than yours, you'll just find yourself being edged out of your good business idea at the end of the day. I had a friend who wanted to set up a diagnostic center who met with an angel investor who said he wanted 80% of the profits. He didn't even want it of the profits just like that. He wanted equity such that they would do profit sharing every year and he takes 80 and this guy takes 20. Now this guy is the one with the know-how is the one with the links to getting equipment, is the one who knows how to use the equipment, is the one who is getting the building, but the funds to buy the equipment was what he was looking for. He wanted an arrangement where, okay, he won't feel trapped in having to pay interest, but 80% just didn't make any sense. It wasn't his. He couldn't even decide the name to call the establishment. If you are taking a citizen, I mean, who are you to decide what they will call the company? So you need to check out your options. Sometimes that kind of deal might be good for you if this is not where you are going. You know, for someone who this particular business is a stepping stone to where he's going, might not mind helping somebody run the business. It's your business, but I want to use it to gain experience so that when I am starting my own, I will know that one is my own and I would have gathered that money over time. Those are the things, depending on your own personal goals, you might have reasons to take 80% equity, but know what your goals are and know if it pays you. One thing I know is that a lawyer would examine all the terms thoroughly and tell you if it pays you or not, if you have let your lawyer understand what you want. If your lawyer knows what you want, he will let you know if this is what you want or he's just looking like it will run away they'll be able to give you the right type of advice. Thank you so much for your thoughts. I think we've had a great no time to to you today. Before we wrap up, finally now, uh, if there are any thoughts you have that you still want to share, I'd like you to take the floor. Okay. Um, I started with the same thought, but I didn't articulate it as a thought. I just shared the idea. And that's what I want to talk about. This is something i have discovered in life and in doing business and i found out that we don't always need money we are the ones that think it's money we need sometimes what you need are relationships sometimes what you need is knowledge if you know you spend less if you don't know you probably be paying a lot of people who know to do it for you so you reduce the amount of money you need by knowing knowing what to do you also reduce the amount of money you need by knowing people who have a relationship with you and have a reason to help you. So when we are thinking about money, the time to start preparing for war is not when war has started. It's a long time before the war. So every day in life, just keep learning. You don't know when that knowledge will come in useful. You don't know what part of your business it will help. One. Two, every Everybody you meet is a potential helper of your business. If they can't help you fund it, they can help you push it, your products and services. So treat every relationship as special. Make sure that you perpetually hold, oh, that's your name. <laughs> Make sure that you always, always hold people there because they can save you time by getting you a short course. They can save you money by getting for free the things money cannot even buy. 
and they can help you link to someone else that can even give you bigger things that they have to offer you. So let's value people and let's please always search for an old on to knowledge. It makes all the difference. Thank you so much, ma'am. We've had a great time listening to you today. And I hope you also yeah. have a great time with that day. Yes, I had a wonderful time on the show. Thank you so much for inviting Thank me. Thank you too. It's been Purple Club and I am Perpetua Fasoli Peter. I do have a wonderful time with family, friends and loved ones. Don't forget to subscribe and if you have not, bye for now.